Mercury Atlas 8 was launched on October 3rd, 1962 at 12.15pm UTC from Launch Complex 14 at Cape Canaveral. In the Mercury spacecraft named Sigma-7 was astronaut Wally Shira, and his primary goal was to spend 9 hours in space, the longest duration by the United States up to that point, to reassure the medical community that there would not be any adverse health effects and to prepare for a one-day mission on Mercury Atlas 9. Mission planners had actually been aiming to launch a one-day mission with Mercury much earlier, realizing that Soviet multi-day successes meant that there should not be unreasonable risk to human health. This began a long American tradition of ignoring Soviet space flights as demonstrations of what was possible, continuing on to doubts during the late 80s whether people would return safely from a 180-day mission in space when Soviet cosmonauts had already spent 237 days on Salyut 7 and 327 days and later 365 days on Mir. Shiraz's secondary missions were scientific observations of the Earth, but these were rendered impossible by the cloud cover over the target locations. Wally Shira had a unique approach to missions in that he was resolute in minimizing the necessary tasks and only performing what was explicitly in the plan and trained for. This was basically opposite to how Scott Carpenter handled his Mercury mission and resulted in Shira handling all the maneuvers with great precision and using minimal fuel. This was a test pilot approach that ensured the mission met all engineering goals. Shira handled retro burn and re-entry so well that he was only half a mile from the recovery ship, leading him to joke that he was aiming for the carrier's elevator. This was in sharp contrast to Carpenter's 250 mile overshoot. There had been an overheating issue with the climate control system, but Shira just turned the setting cooler to solve it. And that was the only real problem besides the issues with visual observations. Shira would go on to have a successful mission on Gemini 6A and then a rather tense mission thanks to the crew being sick and irritable on Apollo 7. The Apollo 7 crew outright rejected some requests and recommendations from Mission Control and this ensured that none of them would fly to space again, but Shira had decided prior to the mission that it would be his last anyway. Mercury Atlas 8 garnered far less attention than previous flights, mainly because the Cuban Missile Crisis was heating up and, in a trend seen in future programs, there was diminishing public interest in what was viewed as a repeat event. After its success, there were originally supposed to be two more missions, a one-day mission on Mercury Atlas 9, which did fly, and a three-day mission on Mercury Atlas 10, which would have been flown by Alan Shepard on what would have been his first orbital mission, but Mercury Atlas 10 was scrapped as NASA moved on to the Gemini program. And with that, thank you for watching this mission profile of Mercury Atlas 8.